created by Rio Grande. Calling all cars, attention all Marin County Sheriff's cars, broadcast 178, wanted for murder. One Vince Lucid, known as Peg Leg Lucid. This man is known to be armed and desperate. That's all. Sick of 
of mutton all the time. Aren't you? No. It's all right. Sure. It's all right. I'm just getting sick of it. We eat at every meal. <sighs> we need some sugar, Arnold. When are we going into town? Well, I'm going to lay down now. <clears throat> what about the sugar, Arnold? This is the last of it. Arnold, why don't you talk? Why don't you talk? What are you? Are you a man or a piece of machinery? You come in every night the same way. You come in and eat and then lie down. It's always the same. You never talk. You lie there and stare at the ceiling. This is all I'll ever get out of life. Living in this lonely house. Cooking. No one that will talk to me. I'm a woman. I want more than this. Why don't you talk? I can't stand it any longer. It isn't right. Right. Days pass, and one morning into this scene of domestic stagnation comes Mel Sturtevant, tall, swaggering. Mel Sturtevant, who has climbed the shaky ladder of crime, has arrived at the questionable station of Big Shot in the rum rings of California. After some time of preliminary conversation with Arnold Barron, his tone changes. Look, Don, I came here with a purpose. I want to talk business with you. What about? Oh, no. Before I spill it to you, I want to know how you feel about things. What things? Hey, you're a talkative devil, aren't you? Well, what do you want to talk about? Well, this will mean money to you. But uh, some people might not like the idea. Who? The law. Would that make any difference to you? Mm -hmm. What's the deal? Well, I don't know whether... Well, here it is. I want to put a still in around here somewhere. I've been in this part of the country for about three weeks looking for the right place. And I think you have it. You get 10% of the profit, and you wouldn't have to do much or anything either. It's a perfect setup. What do you say? Well, I don't know. I never did anything like that before. There isn't a chance in the world that you'll get caught. Why, nobody will ever come out here. It's a cinch. A chance for you to make some real dough. Uh, none of this chicken feed like you get selling sheep. Big money. Oh, I'll think it over. Sounds pretty good. You come back. And returning, Sturdivant finds Arnold Barron ready to comply with his plan. The still is built, put into operation. The two men, partners in the venture. But to Grace Barron, her dreams of romance frustrated until now, Mel Sturdivant is more than a business partner. Blinded by the difference between her husband and this vain, boastful man, she sees in him the end of her drab years in the lonely house. Accordingly, plans are made. Sheridan rents a small cottage in Molita, a little town beyond the Marin County line. Returns to the ranch to find his partner's wife waiting. All her worldly goods packed, ready to leave Arnold Barron to the solitude of the Sonoma Hills. This is the last bundle, Mel. Let's hurry. Oh, we got plenty of time. I'm not afraid of that husband of yours. Well, we don't want any trouble. If we can help it, do we? No, I guess not. Well, let's go. Hurry up, Mel. Here comes Arnold. Let's get out of here. Where? Hey, hey where are you two so Come back there. He's running around the house. Hey, Mel, he's got a gun. Hey. I think that L. Baker 
Ranger and Fred Corsick help him. Do you know the rest of this ring? I'm not sure. Will you name as many as you can? Well, Baron has the biggest skill. Baker and Corsick help him. And then there's Gerald and Sandy and Kidridge and... And through the day, Sturdivant goes down the list of men in the biggest liquor ring on the Pacific coast without a qualm, condemns the friends of former days. Finished. He and Grace Barron walk jauntily to the courthouse door to be met by Vincent Pegleg Lucy, the right-hand man on the hijacking raid. Yeah, you're sure giving them the works, Mel. <laughs> yeah, I got no hankering for any ten years in the clink. I'll be all right. Yeah, you'll be all right. Come on, let's get out of here. Let's take a ride somewhere. <laughs> I don't like the sound of that, Pegleg. You ain't turning on me, are you? No, you know me. I just thought we could take a ride out and have a look at that landing spot on Tamales Bay. Get out of here for a while. Okay, as long as I'm taking the ride with you. Come on, Grace. We'll get some air. Oh, I need some. That courtroom is hot. <laughs> hot. That's a good one. It was hot in more ways than one. That right, Peg? You're right there. The boys are pretty sore. Grace and I will get them back. Come on. You know, I'd hate to be in their spot. You're sure giving them the work. Well, why not? It's them or me. Ah, oh, they're just dumb, that's all. I don't know if I'd like to be in your spot either. Why? They'll all be put away for a long time. I don't have anything to worry about. Nah, I guess not. Speed it up, Peg. Henry Greer start to work on the case at once. 
issue a blanket order to be on the lookout for the Buick sedan in which Lucic had left the scene of the crime. The wheels of justice start turning. At dawn the next morning, the phone rings at McCurdy's home. Well, did you call for a police escort or something? Oh, come on, come on, let's quit kidding. 
What was that, Captain? Uh, some clever person having a little fun. Said it was Lucy. Hello. Hey, Charlie, what's the idea of hanging up on me? This is Vince Lucy. Don't you want to talk to me? All right, all right, Joker. You're lovely. Get into trouble playing with the law like this. Look, look, I'm not fooling. I'm Vince Lucy. I'm down at French Cafe on Eddie Street. There's two of your men taking the front door and they didn't even know me. Oh, that uh, made me kind of mad. Yeah. You are, Lucy Johnson. And I'm glad to hear from you. Are you in town for long? Yeah, I'm going to give myself up. Come on over here. I'll be in the booth. I don't know whether I'm a sucker or not, Lucy, but I'll be right over. Good. And by the way, when you get here, you might tip the two bulls at the door off as to who I am. Ha, <laughs> So long. Yeah, goodbye. Hey. Yeah, I think so. I'll yeah. find out in a little while. He wants me to meet him. Ah, you're not going alone, are you? Yeah, I think I better. Oh, I wouldn't, Captain. That sounds cruel to me. I wouldn't trust that guy, you mean? Come on, you better let me go with you. No, I don't think so. wonder what the idea is, huh? Maybe he's tired of hiding out. Yeah, still, I don't know. Now he's probably got something up his sleeve. You better let no, me no. go with you. No, you stay here. I'm going over there alone. <laughs> Captain Dolia is at the restaurant, walks up to the booth where Vincent Lucic is finishing a sandwich. Well, hello there, Lucic. For some reason or another, I didn't expect you to be here. Sure, 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 I'm here, Charlie. Um, sit down, order something. Yeah, no, thanks, I'm not hungry. Huh? What's on your mind? Well, Charlie, I was hiding out, and all of a sudden I says to myself, I says, Vincent... What are you hiding for? You've got nothing to be afraid of. Well, here I am. Oh, I'm glad to see you and all that. Uh, what's it all about? I'll tell you, this is a bum rap, Charlie. It was my life or theirs. I just happened to beat him to the draw, see? Yeah, who are you talking about? Uh, you know who I mean. Mel Sturdivant and that barren woman. Oh. Yeah. I, uh, I heard about his story. But you can believe me, Charlie. They were taking me for a ride, oh, see? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I don't know why, but, uh... Mel, well, he always had it in for me. Well, that's funny. Now, I thought you and he were good friends. No, no. No, we never were. <laughs> never were good friends. Of course not. And you see, that day we, we went up to Molly's Bay. Well, I uh, kicked about some of the things he was saying. Mm-hmm. What was he saying, Lizzie? Oh, uh, well, he was making some of his wires crack. Well, when he was doing that, I... Got a little sore, and, and I kicked the bottom. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, he pulls out his rod, and he hits me over the head with it. Yeah, I still got a bump. Uh, you want me to show it to you? No, 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 never mind. Uh, then what happened? Well, after that, he, he, he slugged me. And, uh, well, I naturally I reached for my gun, and yeah. I beat him to the draw, and I let him have it before he could plug me. Yeah, that's the way it happened. Yeah, now, just a minute, Lucy. What about Mrs. Barron? What'd you shoot her for? Oh, her. <laughs> well, uh, well, you could have floored me when she all of a sudden ripped open her bag and pulled out a gun and started waving it at me. I figured she was going to bump me off, so, well, what was there for me to do? I, I just let her have it. It was self-defense all the way through. <laughs> sure, self-defense. Ah, listen to me, Charlie. I'm turning myself in because I know I can beat this. Man. All right, listen. We'll see. But right now, uh... <clears throat> Let's get down to the county jail. Huh? The county jail? Sure. <laughs> Come on, Charlie. Let's go. So, just four weeks after the murder at Tamales Bay, Vincent Peg Leg Lucy, confident, unruffled, goes to trial, tells his story, what his lies. Unable to match the evidence that is heaped against them, become useless in the face of truth. And cowed by fear, the man who killed Mel Sturdivant in cold blood received sentence June 29, 1930. It is the sentence of this court that you'll be confined in the state penitentiary for the rest of your natural life. <laughs> Lucic went to the penitentiary, but his stay there was destined to be cut short by an unexpected happening. The strain of his unhealthy past, combined with worry, drove Lucic insane, made of the once boastful gangster a cackling old man.
and the rest of all sins, doomed to spend the rest of his life in the insane asylum. Thus ends the case of Peg Leg Vince Lucy. Grande cracked gasoline to fight crime, to save property, to protect lives. Rio Grande is pardonably proud of the public service work their products are doing. It is a contribution to the welfare of the community and the strongest endorsement and recommendation of any gasoline. Listen to this list of communities specifying Rio Grande cracked gasoline just since the first of the year. Pasadena, Marysville, Monterey Park, Linwood, Glendora, Southgate, Phoenix, Orange County, Coconina County, Arizona, Las Vegas, Nevada. We have told you before about Los Angeles, Oakland, Berkeley, Fresno, Santa Barbara, San Diego, Santa Barbara County, San Diego County, Maricopa County, and many, many other cities and counties. The mileage this year promises to be much greater than 50 million miles. In many of these cities where Rio Grande Cracks gasoline is the official brand, Sinclair Motor Oil adds to the smoothness of police car performance. Every motorist who specified Sinclair motor oil for his car is getting the finest quality motor oils money can buy. Every dealer who sells Sinclair motor oils knows by the scientific Sinclair Law lubrication the exact grade of Sinclair oil you should use in your motor in its present state of wear. He will save you money and add to the life of your car. See him tomorrow and ask for a free copy of Calling All Cars News, that newsy publication of radio and screen gossip, police stories, and other interesting features. 500,000 readers every month. If you haven't seen it, ask your nearest independent Rio Grande dealer for a copy tomorrow. Calling all cars, attention all Marin County Sheriff's cars. A cancellation broadcast 178 regarding a murder. The suspect is now in custody. That's all. Frederick Lindsley, bidding you good night for Rio Grande. <laughs>